Hey gang, welcome to my channel. Thanks for coming. Um, trying a little bit of a different format, you know, with the, the, the cooler and the bar and the taps behind me. Maybe it might help a little bit with the presentation. Get my crap together. <laughs> a little bit more of a structured uh, 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 a video. Uh, anyway, uh, in this next video, I'm gonna just, it's gonna be a real short seven minute video. I'm just going to show you how um, or what we did to prepare our 20 liter white oak barrel for uh, the whiskey run that we did. Um, it's really simple and, um, and uh, I'll go through it, it won't be that long. And I kind of describe how, what's going on with the brewery equipment in China and we're kind of going in a different direction right now uh, just because of uh, shipping rates and costs right now. And importation so um, and uh, I, I do use a plastic container um, I believe it's and I might get the name wrong polypropyl plastic um, it's uh, uh, it's pretty thick it's the it's the um, plastic jugs that you see that crystal water or um, this is in Mexico it's, it's called crystal uh, they use um, for short term uh, liquor storage like less than a week. I don't see that it being a problem at all. It's not melting the plastic. I get no smell from the plastic, no leaching, nothing. Um, I would not leave it in there longer than a week. Um, in this particular case, it was only in there for two days. So I know that there's better methods, better plastics to use. Um, that's the container I have right now. I had at the time. Um, I do have now 50 barrel, 50 barrel. 50 liter uh, stainless steel kegs that I can use. I do have 29 liter ke uh, stainless steel kegs that I can use to put the, the liquor in. It should probably be easier because then I could just probably push it with CO2 uh, into the tank and be done with it, or excuse me, into the barrel and have no issues. Um, instead of having to pour it, you'll see in the video. Uh, but um, I know I got some feedback on my last video about using plastic and, and so forth. So. Um, Anyway, it's not the best. Is it gonna hurt this particular batch? No. Um, I wouldn't recommend keeping your spirits high proof alcohol in that type of plastic for long periods of time, specifically over a week. Um, but uh, I do have a, a bottle of my last run. I need to put a lo logo on there, but uh, this, uh, this actually was made with some sugar. And I think I've said in one of my other videos that uh, I was having a real difficult time making a, a mash because I didn't have the equipment. And uh, uh, I wasn't getting the gravity. So I, I would cheat. I would put some sugar in there and uh, um, it, it turned out great. I mean, I've had lots of compliments on the whiskey. Um, I, I drank it. Uh, I, I think it turned out real good. This last batch that I did, I didn't use any sugar, and I mean, in my opinion, the, it's, it's way up here. It's so much better, um, the flavor. Now, it just comes through so much better, and uh, I was able to get uh, approximately just shy of five gallons uh, of 120 proof spirits that goes into this barrel. So, uh, hope you enjoy it. It's just a quick seven minute video, and, um, and I'm hoping to brew another whiskey next week or so and uh, we'll try and get some video of that the last uh, last uh, whiskey run we did we had a hell of a time a nightmare uh, again this is a new system to us and uh, I mean it was just impacted the uh, uh, we were using corn flakes and 51% uh, corn flakes and then 49% malt and uh, it was like cement and I used rice holes Obviously not enough. So this next time we're gonna just put a ton of rice holes in the mix and hopefully it's gonna turn out that much better. So, all right guys, onto the, 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 uh, the video of filling, uh, filling the barrel. All right, so we're now onto the final stage. I didn't show the previous part. Um, this is a 20 liter white oak uh, barrel from Jalisco, Mexico. 
one of my videos I had asked if you get, anybody knew if there was a difference between the White Oak and Jalisco or in the United States and uh, according to their little leaflet, their pamphlet, it's the exact same oak that they use in the US. So go figure. Anyway, we're going to get ready to uh, fill this. In the instructions from um, the company is uh, La Casa Baril in Jalisco and they say to put uh, water in the barrel for one to four days. I believe it's been three days, right? And uh, there hasn't been any leaking. And so basically filling it with water kind of fills it up and expands it. And so that it creates a nice seal inside and make, makes the wood kind of expand. And so we emptied it all out. In the instructions, it also says to put hot water in there to get some of the residual uh, charcoal chips out of it. I didn't do that process because I'm probably going to end up using like a coffee filter or something just to, when I, when I am ready to take the whiskey out, I'll run it through a little coffee filter of some sort um, and put it into a bottle. So I don't see the necessity of doing that extra step. I may be wrong, but I've never done it. So this is ready to go. Um, I know some of you might say, I can't believe you're using this, but I have just about almost five gallons of 120 proof whiskey, white lightning, in this plastic <laughs> water jug. They call it a garrofon in Spanish. And uh, I sanitized it beforehand, so it really shouldn't make any difference. Um, I would like to buy a, maybe a glass one or I guess I could use a keg, <laughs> but all right. So we're ready to, uh, to fill this up. So here we go. All right, you got that there? All right, hopefully we don't spill any. All right, and this might take a while, so I'll probably end up fast forwarding it on the film. Smells good. I can smell it from here. I'm sure there is an easier way of doing this. Um, probably if we had it on the floor, maybe. <laughs> We're not at that level yet to get all the cool toys. So while, we'll, while I'm pouring this in here, I'll tell you about our experience with trying to get our new brewery system from China. I already spent, you know, about 15% of the cost of the brewery equipment as a deposit for them to make it and it's been sitting there for two years, done and complete. You know, the last year with the pandemic, I had to save my cash flow and, or my money for our restaurant and brewery in Carson City. Didn't want to, uh, you know, complete the purchase when, you know, our fate was unclear. And um, anyway, we're getting ready. We got the money now. I can pay the, uh, the, the rest of the deposit and get this stuff shipped. Well, this last year with COVID has this, these consequences with the, the shipping fleets going back and forth from Asia to the US and so forth. And um, the rates for shipping are just astronomical right now. Uh, a year and a half ago, our deposit was, or not deposit, our shipping quote for two containers was $3,800, $3,800. The quote that I just received was close to $25,000 for two containers. And it's supply and demand. As the world economy opens up, demand goes up, and there's just not enough vessels and space on those vessels to ship all the goods in a timely manner. So the shipping companies are just raking in the profits right now and jacking up the price. So I, you know, if I pay $25,000 for shipping, plus 16% VAT on the importation of the equipment, plus the, the amount of money that's gonna take to ship the equipment from 
the port here in Mexico to us in Ciudad del Carmen, I'm close to 45% of the total cost of the, of the equipment. So I decided to put a hold on it. And if I have to eat that uh, initial deposit, I will. But I just can't justify paying that amount of money on the importation, the shipping, and everything. So we're going to go with a local company here in Mexico and buy a tank, a glycol unit, and a uh, keg washer and some accessories. And we're just going to try to make this system a little bit better. And, uh, and uh, hopefully this will take us into 2022. And hopefully the shipping charges will be much less. And we can go ahead and pick up the equipment then. But uh, that's kind of where we are right now. All right, we're almost done filling this. Mm, smells so good. All right, I think we got it all, no? All right, do we have a flashlight? We're gonna, I'm just gonna look inside to see what level we are here. Hola, que tal? Un momento. Okay, we're almost full, so we've now got this uh, whiskey in our barrel. We'll put a label on it, and we're ready to go. So hopefully in about, we'll check it in about five to six weeks, and I'll probably end up aging it for at least four months, five months, and we'll see uh, how it tastes after that.